welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. I know Monday night's a hard one, especially people who are in education um, to get out because we're busy on Mondays catching up from, from the weekend. But um, again, we really appreciate it, especially uh, Orchid Junior High uh, and the district for allowing us to use the space. Um, my name is Jennifer Dolan. I am the Vice President of the League of Women Voters Santa Maria Valley. And the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan but political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. It works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, influences public policy through education and advocacy. So tonight we are here to talk to our five board candidates for the Orchid Union School District. It's very exciting to have so many people interested in serving and helping out with the kids in our community. And tonight, Janet Blevins is going to be our facilitator. She'll be coming up and talking to you about the format. But just real quickly before we get started, um, right outside, the candidates have left some information if you'd like to look at that on your way out. And also on our table right over here, we have some nonpartisan information about the upcoming election. If you're interested in any of that, please feel free to stop by and pick those up. Um, also, there is uh, some information about uh, joining the league and also voter registration if you need to update yours. So with no further ado, we will get started. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Janet Blevins. Um, I'm so happy to be here. I have been a member of the league nationally for a very long time, and I've been um, a member of this league for a few years now. Um, and I remember growing up with the League of Women Voters recommendations for various um, propositions and so forth. We do not endorse candidates, but we give all kinds of really good information about all the candidates and all the propositions without um, we, we do endorse propositions, do we? Yes. Yeah, but we don't, we don't endorse candidates. So um, the format this evening is that you will all get three minutes to tell us what your experiences and training is and are that will aid you in being an effective OUSD board member. Um, and this is going to be kind of combined with your opening statement. So each of you will have three minutes for a total of 15. And yes, we are pretty strict on the time. Um, we want to allow as many questions at intermission as we can. So we have a 30-second warning sign, a 15-second warning sign, and a stop sign. Um, my stop sign's in red, but this one's in yellow. So um, if, if you keep going, after the time is up, I might get up here and say, please stop, <laughs> which is pretty scary, right? OK, um, we will start with, oh, we're going to alternate, aren't we? No. no. At the break, I forgot to tell you this part. At the break, we will pass out um, three by five cards. We don't have like open discourse with the audience, but each of you will be able to write down questions, and then we will bring them up here and try to get to as many of them as possible after the break. And all of the candidates will be answering the questions that, that are chosen from the audience. So, um, And that's one of the reasons that we're kind of strict on time is because we like to have as many of the, of the audience questions answered as, as possible. So let's begin. We will start with um, Laurel. And you get three minutes to explain. What are your experiences and training that will aid you in being an effective Orkut Unified School District board member? All right, well, welcome everybody. Um, thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this event tonight, and thank you community for coming out and taking your evening to listen to what we have to say. Um, many of you I know, I have been an educator in this community. I have been a counselor and a parent for the past 20 years. I have a master's degree in educational counseling and a PPS credential, which gives you the ability to teach as a school counselor. I also have a master's degree in educational leadership and an administrative credential. I've worked in eight different schools and three districts 
with students from grades K through 12. I've also taught at the college level for the University of Laverne. I was a member of the School Advisory Committee at Orchid Academy for eight years and started working at Orchid Academy as, the, as a school counselor and then the dean at the beginning of the school was opened. I've had the privilege of helping and implementing many programs over the years, some of them being the concurrent enrollment program that maybe some of your students are currently in, and the 10-year career plan for all students at the high school. I've also served on the OUSD District Strategic Planning Committee, and I've been a school site council member and a PTSA vice president in my role as a parent in the district. I also have six children in the public education system, three of them that have or do attend schools in Orchid. They are right there in the back. My oldest, Maddie, just graduated from the University of Irvine with a neuropsychology degree. Um, my middle daughter, Ariana, is currently a student. She's a junior at Orchid Academy. And my youngest son, Brenton, just started kindergarten out in Los Alamos at the K-8 program. I've been a school counselor for thousands of students, and I have spent my professional life listening to the issues they face and have proudly watched them overcome them and go on to do great things in our community and others. I'm passionate about the difference caring adults can make in the lives of children and the power of an education. I believe in educating the whole child, which means not only academically successful, but also physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. Thank you, guys. Hi, I'm Sean Henderson. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you to the League of Women Voters as well for having us. Um, I just want to start off by saying uh, I've been married going on 27 years to my wife, Tiffany. I have three children, Austin, Garrett, and Brooke. I've lived in this area for over 25 years. I've had over 35 years of management experience. I've handled large budgets along with profit and loss statements. My experience also includes uh, facility management, human resources, payroll, and managing, managing a business with over 300 employees. I'm currently the treasurer of our homeowners association where we are dealing with budgets, facility management, and reserves. Three of my years of management was owning my own business, which was TNT's frozen yogurt, where we donated back to the schools with fundraiser nights, merit awards, numerous other forms. I was very involved with all the PTA groups and all the schools. I volunteered on numerous nonprofit boards, including the YMCA, Rotary Club, and Heart Association. I've coached my kids in sports in the community for over 19 years, which have included Orchid Youth Soccer, Orchid Youth Basketball, Orchid Little League, and Orchid Babe Ruth. My kids have been in this great Orchid school district for over 19 years, having attended Joe Nightingale, May Grisham, Patterson Road Elementary, Lakeview Junior High, Orchid Junior High, and Orchid Academy High School. Uh, I've been on uh, school site councils with a lot of those schools, and I've volunteered in numerous events as well. And that's my background. Thank you very much. Almost exactly 20 years ago, my family decided to move to the Central Coast. At that time, our first child, Christina, was about a year and a half, and Isabella was on the way. And so we decided this was time to escape from L.A. We had looked at lots of communities, and my wife found a realtor named Steve Southwick, who showed us a little community called Orchid. In addition to being a realtor, he was a local radio personality and a member of the Orchid School Board and he really sold us. My daughters attended the Orchid schools from kindergarten through uh, eighth grade for Christina, and then she went to Rigetti. Isabella just graduated from Orchid Academy High School this past June. Both received great educations and now are away and been successful at college. Education has always been important to me. I grew up in Monterey Park, a diverse community in East Los Angeles. I was blessed with some amazing teachers and a, a great peer group of students with high expectations and good work habits. With this support, I received scholarships and was able to get engineering degrees from Princeton and Stanford universities. 
Later, I went to business school, graduate business school at Cal Poly Pomona. I've worked several years in aerospace and also for Caltech. And then in the mid-1990s, I joined the family company, which was Melfred Borzal, first as an engineer, then as head of operations, and currently as CEO. All this time, I've really had an emphasis on being involved in education. Currently, I serve on industrial advisory boards at Allen Hancock College and with the Mechanical Engineering Department at Cal Poly. I've been a board member with the Oregon Children's Art Foundation for several years uh, and currently serve as board president. I hope you all got a chance to go to the Chalk Festival this past Saturday. Um, I'm currently on the Measure G Oversight Committee. Uh, and then my company is really deeply involved with education. We financially support robotics, music, theater, uh, athletics, uh, career and technical education at schools within our district, but also throughout the area. Uh, we participate in a dozen or more career days each year. In two weeks, we're going out to Grizzly Academy. Um, we also provide summer student internships to about half a dozen kids each summer. Uh, we've been fortunate to have some great kids from Orchid Academy and other schools. And it's my hope to continue to support education as a member of the Orchid School Board. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Steller. And uh, first off, I want to thank you all for coming and thank the uh, League of Women Voters because um, Orchid really doesn't have any representation in government. And this is really about all you get is the, school, the uh, Orchid Union School Board. So thank you all for coming out. My motto for uh, my campaign is kids really do come first. And um, I was a kid a long time ago, and my, my uh, education was Patterson Road School, Lakeview Junior High School, Ernest Regetti High School, Allen Hancock College, Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. So I don't think you can get any more local than that. All of my brothers, there are six of us, we all went to the Orchid schools. I have four children, all a product of Orchid schools. Those six sons produced 15 grandchildren. Of those 15 grandchildren, every one of them went to college. The very least they did was an associate's degree. There are three still in college. My brother Ron has three daughters who went to Orchid Academy here. There are three with doctorates. And my brother Dave's son is going into medical school. So I think all of us need to thank that young lady right there, my mom, for raising such a wonderful family. Now, mom went to one-year college, but her dreams were dashed because she married a guy who wanted to become a doctor. So he went to medical school, and she became a telephone operator and put him through college. So dad isn't with us anymore, but thank you, too, for the inspiration. Lastly, as far as education, this is the reason why I do it. This is my granddaughters, Ireland and Dalen. Ireland just started uh, kindergarten. Dalen will be following her in a year. They don't live here, but uh, when you're a grandparent, as I'm sure many of you are, I think your priorities in life change, and they certainly have for me. As far as my work experience goes, I own a little grocery store about three blocks away. My wife owns Deja Vu at the loading dock about two blocks that way. I've owned it for 14 years, and as an entrepreneur, everything falls on your own shoulders. If I don't succeed, my family doesn't eat. So I'm constantly making decisions, budget decisions, all those type of things, hiring decisions. Prior to that, I had 23 years with Long's Drug Stores. I was proud to have managed stores in Lompoc, Santa Maria, and Orchid. And those years of management gave me experience with $13 million budgets. Again, hiring, mentoring. Mr. Ty Fredericks there was a mentor of mine and now a school teacher here. But again, I'm here for all 5,209 kids. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for putting this on, all the district staff that probably set everything up and have to clean up after us, uh, the existing board members that are here, Dr. Blow, all the members of the OEA and CSEA that are here, all my family and friends. <laughs> Sorry, that was weird. 
I've lived in Orchid my whole entire life. My husband and I now are raising our children here. My daughter has gone to Patterson, and Lakeview is now a sophomore at Orchid Academy High School. My son is a fourth grader at Orchid Academy in Los Alamos. I have been a business manager with the privilege of working with my mom <laughs> for 15 years. Um, she owns Next Day Signs, and so when she goes on vacation, then I'm the one running the business. <laughs> we have to keep it going. Um, I have a bachelor's in social science after attending Allen Hancock College. Uh, in my spare time, my daughter and I volunteer at the Santa Barbara County Animal Shelter. I'm on the Santa Barbara County Stand Down Committee, which is coming up in October, if anyone is interested. Um, I'm on the SOAR board, which is supporting Orchid Academy's academic resources. I've previously been on the Orchid Youth Softball Association board as a treasurer. I'm on the PTSA board for my son's school. I've previously been on the Lakeview School Site Council. So I feel like all of us have experience and feel like we have a good chance of winning, otherwise we wouldn't be here. But I think the question comes down to why, why am I here? And my thing is it's not always about the business. Sometimes it's about the discussion, including people and transparency of the process. And in doing that and inviting that in, I have topics that eventually I think we'd like to look into. Dual immersion, I know we've already looked into that, but some people feel like maybe we didn't exhaust all the possibilities. Student and school safety, safe water, it seems to be an issue that keeps coming up from parents. Uh, introducing more art, the question of technology in the classrooms. And so I think I feel like I'm here as an open book. I want to take everything in and make educated decisions based on the information I get. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very well done. Um, our next question, and you will have um, five minutes. Each of you will have five minutes to answer this question. What are your goals for OUSD as a district, and how do you envision working with the various stakeholder groups? parents, students, teachers, staff, administration, and community members to implement that vision. You want me to repeat that? I will anyway. How about it? What are your goals for OUSD as a district, and how do you envision working with the various stakeholder groups, parents, teachers, students, staff, administration, and community members to implement that vision? Five minutes. Okay, Mr. Henderson, you begin, please. Uh, first off, uh, I just want to say it's about the kids. Um, at the Poly Focus, we've taken this position. I was sure that we keep our kids and teachers safe and secure while capping classroom size. We'll continue to improve on school security and safety. Measure G dollars are currently at work with Alice Shaw under a remodel with one entry access point. They are moving the bus pickup and drop off points. We are also moving where kids line up at the school. One point access is very important as we monitor all the people going in and out of our schools. Site safety projects at Joe Nightingale, Dunlap, Patterson, and Pine Grove are at the planning stages. Orchid Academy and Elder Reed are the design phase as well. We need to never stop looking at how we can keep all of our children safe and secure. We need to also keep a high regard and staying consistent with fire drills disaster drills, and be consistent with how we handle bullying. Classroom size is important. We have to cap the number of students. Teachers can't do their job in overcrowded classrooms. We must be able to maintain order to have safe classrooms. I would ensure that we have a great curriculum with added enrichment and technology and learning. Art and music are an important part of enrichment and a part of a well-rounded education. It also shows them other interests that they never explored. I will I feel that we need to find a way to increase technology in our schools. We do this by providing mobile technologies so teachers can use it to teach and students can use it to learn. Of course, the first part is training all of our teachers on how to use technology, and many of those teachers being trained are going through training currently. Today, students use technology as part of learning. We need to continue to find ways for all students to have access to these devices. 
We will continue to look at refreshing our learning devices so students have access to current technology as well. We need to find ways to include this learning in all classes. We need to look at teachers' laptops as well when it comes to refreshing technology. We also need to make sure that we have the best Wi-Fi connectivity in order to support all the devices. This, I believe, will be a consistent area as we look at annually uh, to keeping these devices up to date and being able to connect with our students. I believe there will be a day when we move from textbooks to learning on technology. I will ensure that we keep an eye on the district budget and how Measure G funds are spent. I will continue to make sure those dollars are used to modernize our schools and update them as well. We need to maxi maximize resources within our budget while maintaining the highest academics. We need to look for grants whenever possible to help with funding. We will do all this by maintaining reserves so when emergencies arise, we have money. I will do all this by working with the district staff where I've established relationships. I will listen to teachers, parents, students by gathering their input as often as possible. I look forward to working with all stakeholders. We need to keep it local by showing how budgets will affect school sites. Be specific and relevant by showing how budget decisions are relevant to concern of the stakeholders. Be concise by making budgets easy to understand. Simplify and make information easy to understand and share information as in many forms as possible. We need to make sure that uh, meetings, newsletters, or other information are on our district website, and we need to continue district board meetings and a better communication method to have better, better attendance. So we have a better interaction with all stakeholders as well. I look forward to being visible, accessible, and a person that gathers all facts when I'm looking to make the best decisions for our kids. Because remember one thing, it's all about the kids. Thank you. I believe this is a very important time for the Orchid School District. Two years ago, Orchid voters passed Measure G to improve school safety and modernize facilities. This was a $60 million investment by the community, a statement that we want our children to have the best opportunities to reach their potential. It was also a real endorsement of the district, the teachers, staff, administration, trustees, and a belief that that money would be used wisely. This summer, those first bonds were sold and construction has started. The first project's emphasizing safety and security. Uh, if you've been to Alice Shaw, you've seen that it's now currently enclosed. There's a new bus drop-off area and barricades between where cars are driving and where kids are walking. Similar work will start at other campuses soon, and then on to additional projects beyond that. But we really owe it to the taxpayers and to the students to make sure we get the maximum benefit from this really big investment. So I'm currently, as I said, on the Citizens Oversight Committee for Measure G. I think my background can be helpful. I'm trained as an engineer and I've been involved in several construction projects um, at my company. I understand blueprints, change orders, schedules, budgets. And I've learned the hard way the necessity of getting input before really moving forward. In 2010, we did a major expansion at Melford Borzal, adding two new buildings. I had everything calculated out, drawn, I was gonna have welding and finished inventory in one building, and then in a smaller building was gonna be raw materials and sawing. We got the power put in, we got the lights put in, and then one of my welders came to me and said, hey boss, this isn't gonna make, this doesn't make any sense. You can't maneuver the long steel bars in that little building, the big building is way too much space for the welding department. Think it over. And, and he was right. And so we had to redo the power, redo the lighting. But what we ended up with was a better facility. And looking for that input earlier would have made a big difference. So I want to make sure that we use this money wisely and make sure we get input from all of those that are going to use in the facilities. Second big thing I see going on at Orchid right now is the simultaneous retirement of three long-serving board members. Uh, we're very fortunate to still have Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Phillips and Mrs. Moranini, uh, excellent board members, but Mr. Buchanan, Hatch, and Peterson, uh, together we're losing over 50 years of experience who were here for the Lakeview Gym, 
the charter school, hiring several superintendents, getting Measure G passed, and their absence is going to be felt. So the new board members are going to need to get up to speed as quickly as possible and with no real time to get a feel for things. I think my experience and involvement with the district and having had kids go from kindergarten to 12th grade in the district will help with that, but I do know that all of the candidates here are passionate about education and will work super hard to learn this job. I think there's also going to be changes coming in Sacramento this, this, uh, this November, and I'm sure that's going to present new opportunities and new challenges. But budgets are always going to be a challenge. Wages and benefits are over 80% of the budget. Measure G is helping us with facilities, um, but I'd like to see what else we can do. From what I've seen, some of the best learning happens when students are self-motivated. Uh, robotics is a great uh, example of that. Kids stay late, work weekends, and they learn how to solve big problems, work on projects, collaborate, work as part of a team. Similar things happen in athletics, music, theater programs, but all these things need resources and money that may not be available in the general budget. So maybe it's naive, I don't know, but I think we can look for opportunities for partnerships, reaching out to local businesses, to community organizations, OCAF, PCPA, um, Hancock, Cal Poly, maybe even work with other school districts, learn what they do best, and learn how to leverage each other's strength. I really think that by working together, we can increase opportunities for all of our kids. And to address these issues and make sure we have progress, we need an active and very involved board. I'd love to see more discussions, have scheduled time to get feedback from all of our schools, hear from principals, PTA presidents, teachers, students, We've got a great strong school here in Orchid, and we've got some big challenges and opportunities ahead of us. I think I've got some skills and a passion for education, and I look forward to the opportunity to serve the Orchid School Board. So my first goal is to get elected. You have the ballot maybe in your mailbox right now. And I'm the very last name on the very last page of all the candidates. So remember, last is first. <laughs> first off, we've got um, an amazing board that's done a tremendous job in keeping the budget and, and the issues and, and the academic standards high. I want to thank the existing board members. We have Lisa and we have Liz and three retiring gentlemen, which Eric just mentioned, Bob, Rob, and Jim. Thank you for a tremendous amount of service. We really, really, really appreciate it. So with that, this is an important election because you're losing all that experience in um, three board positions, five people running. So I'm going to enjoy working with two of you or, or supporting three of you. So once I learn how to do the job, I do have some priorities. I'll just list them one at a time and I'll go into them. I think safety is very important. Students continuing to learn at high levels. College and career preparation. Measure G and how that second and, or excuse me, third and fourth stage of the $60 million is uh, allocated. And key site 17. So safety, as Eric mentioned a minute ago, um, Al Shah has been fenced. And it is, um, it's a shame to think that we have to do this. Who would have thought 20, 30 years ago that we'd be worried about our kids when they're in school? But it is a fact of life. You all know the stories of Columbine and everything else, and we sure don't want to have that happen in our community. But more than fencing, I think that the schools need adequate counseling to identify kids in trouble. They need uh, a sheriff protocol. I think sometimes the Santa Barbara County Sheriff is so worried about Brigadier High School, they don't remember that there's a high school right here. And there are two, ju two junior highs, three junior highs actually, when you include Overmead and, and Oak Eight and Lakeview and uh, Orchid Junior High School, where there can be trouble. So there really needs to be a presence with the uh, Sheriff's Department. And I think probably the most important thing is 
parents and kids need to identify and feel important about their school. They need to have pride in their schools, and the community needs to have pride in their schools. And that's where I really believe I can make that connection with, with all of my uh, experience. Secondly, students continue to learn at high levels. I think the district has very, very solid test scores. There's always room for improvement. And I see it right here in this very room. Every year around May, I get a call from Debbie or from Holly or, or Janet or someone will say, Mark, time for community interviews. And I sit here in a format kind of like this, and all those eighth grade students come marching in here, and I get the opportunity to talk to about 10 of them every time. And the things that they dream about and talk about are amazing. I do these same interviews at Lakeview Junior High and Olga Reed and Oak Eight. And oftentimes I hear community members say, God, those dumb kids. But no, these kids are amazing. I probably interviewed close to 200 kids coming out of the eighth grade, and I've had one kid who didn't want to be there. They have goals that are attainable. They want to be doctors and firemen. They want to join the army. They want to fly planes. And this is in the eighth grade, and I'm really excited to share all that with you because these community interviews, if you ever get the chance to do it, they are enlightening. College and career prep. I talked about this earlier, and I'm very proud of uh, all of my nieces and nephews and kids that they all went to college. And that is the uh, goal of all parents for their kids, but let's face it, not all the kids will go to college. Those that don't, they need a path. And I think it's incumbent uh, upon the schools to give them a path that will work locally. So what kind of job are they going to get in the Santa Maria Valley? Maybe they should be educated in agriculture, in enology, in aerospace. Let's give these kids a chance to make some money. Wow, that time goes fast. Measure G, we already kind of talked about that. We'll, we'll have a chance to spend another $30 million. And last is Key Site 17, which was the brainchild of uh, Marissa O'Shea's. This is a very enlightening and an entrepreneurial concept that we can talk about more later. Thank you. As far as goals when getting elected, I'd like to read the mission of the school district, um, which is a pamphlet that we got in our half-inch thick binder at our orientation. Uh, it says, mission, opportunities for learning are limitless. The Orchid Union School District's mission is to nurture, educate, empower, and inspire our children to successfully navigate and thrive in an ever-changing world. So there are a few things that I am interested in looking in. My priorities would be following through with Measure G. People have worked very hard on that, and I think it's important that we follow through and make sure things stay on task. School safety, like Mark, um, I think it's a very complex issue. It's, just, it's not just physical. Thankfully, we have Measure G for that, but I think we need to look at the mental side of students as well. And also a fiscally sound budget. My main goal would be to come in with an open mind. I've been studying that very large binder. I've been learning all the very strange acronyms that seem to be compounding as we go to meetings. Um, I've been learning about how curriculum is implemented, and I've been trying to read the budget. <laughs> uh, I feel that anyone coming in with too much of a plan might be zeroed in on something, and they might miss something else. So I think it's important to be open and have a loose plan, but not be so rigid towards it. My job as a board member would not just be to foster communication with the stakeholders, but to maintain it. This process of involving the community or stakeholders started weeks ago for me. It's not always about committees. It's not always about uh, advisories. Sometimes it's about attending back to school nights. And sometimes it's about going to the chalk fest and going to school fundraisers and being visible and active. I think that great communication begins with a connection, and that is what I want to do.
Thank you. So my vision for the OUSD is to reinforce and support goals that address educating the whole child. To do that, it is imperative to make sure that our teaching staff and the, have the resources and training necessary to address the academic needs of our students. It is also important that all staff, classified and certificated, have what they need to ensure that our campuses are safe, secure, and inclusive. I do believe in the role of the counselor is very important to the social emotional well-being of students. I applaud the district for adding a counselor at the junior high with this in mind. I think it would be important to invest and continue to reach out to our community partners to create wellness centers, particularly at the secondary level. Preparing students for the 21st century is a combination of thoughtful use of technology and focused and relevant career technical education. The district needs to reach out to community partners and expand a 10-year plan curriculum that has been so successful at Orchid Academy High School down to the junior high and elementary levels. Students need to be given the opportunities to authentically interact with the world of work. Meeting the needs of a whole child is a daunting task. However, it is possible that the entire Orchid community is brought into the process for this to happen. I know as a member of the district strategic planning team that great ideas are not limited to the work, the folks working at the schools. I'm excited for the opportunity to build on what a successful school district we already have. I think safety is important and I know that's been addressed a little bit tonight. I'll give you an example of a story um, that I asked my daughter if I could share. When I was a school counselor, I found that in the last five to six years, I was seeing more and more students who were coming to me and not being able to sit in their classes because of the anxiety levels they were having and the stress they were having in their daily life. Um, I asked my daughter a few weeks ago, you know, I said, Ari, what is it that you think is making kids feel more anxious? Because I've been counseling for 15 years and I've just seen so much more of it lately. And, she looked at me and said, Mom, do you know what it feels like to go to school every day thinking you might die? And it really took me back to when I graduated high school was when Columbine happened. And I remember sitting, I had just graduated, and I remember sitting on my couch as a 19-year-old and feeling such anxiety about the world we lived in and how scary that was as a young person to feel that way. And that was just the beginning of what sadly is very normal for a lot of students nowadays. So I think that when it comes to safety, I think we are doing some great things with Measure G and I think we are also doing some great things with hiring more school counselors. But I think as a community, we have to understand what it feels like to be a student and address those needs also. Um, there's also already in progress, in there's already a process in place for stakeholders to have input to have just to the district priorities and program. This is called the Local Control and Accountability Plan. It's called the LCAP, if you've heard about that. In my current job, I'm currently the Director of Curriculum and Student Services at Olive Grove Charter. And one of my jobs is to help create and work on the LCAP. In order for this document to accomplish its goal, it must drive the district. I would ensure that the voices of all stakeholders are heard by following the LCAP when making decisions. I know that a student is most successful when families and educators work together. Schools are most successful when parents feel listened to and are made a part of the educational process. As a board member, I would value the opinions of the families in this community. Our certificated and classified staff work hard to educate the children of ORCID, and I believe that collaboration and communication are key. As a board member, I understand the importance of listening to educators and being present on campus to see what the issues are. Thank you very much, all candidates. We have five fine candidates for three positions. Um, we will now take a, an intermission for about 10 minutes and Cards and pens and pencils are being passed out for you to write down questions, which we will choose and then ask after the intermission. So you are free to move around, drink your water, 
think up good questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being here, and thank you for all of your wonderful answers. We have time to do four questions for sure, maybe six, um, and we will be alternating the person who begins, um, and it's going to be Mr. Melsheimer's turn to start on this first question. So for each of these questions, you will have two minutes to answer each question, and then you all get three minutes for a final statement. Okay? All right. Would you like to know the question? <laughs> Considering that Orkut receives less money than some neighboring districts under the Local Control Funding Formula, LCFF, what are your budget spending priorities? And would you put teachers' salaries at the top of the priority list? So, currently, as I mentioned, um, salary and budget or salary and benefits account for, I believe, 84 percent of the current budget. It doesn't leave a lot of room left to do other things. I think it's um, under the current funding formula. There's always going to be that disparity between the Orchid District and Santa Maria Bonita or other uh, neighboring districts that that offer, operate under different um, conditions. That said, this is still a, a great place to work, and I think we continue to do a great job of attracting quality teachers that do a great job here. Um, I think things may be changing in November, and there may hopefully be a little bit more opportunities as funds get freed up um, with a new governor. Um, teachers are definitely where learning happens, but you can't starve all of the other parts of the school that are needed for operation. Um, the teachers in uh, the district are operating under a, a new contract, and so things are set for the time being. Um, again, we've definitely got to keep, understand that the teachers are where education happens, but we can't kill off the rest of the school just to fund that one section. I'd love to just give you all a raise. But unfortunately, we do have to, to stay within the budget. And um, when you compare San Juan Benita and Orchid Union, you're comparing apples and oranges. They're two completely different animals, the way they're funded. But um, I think what a lot of people do forget is the health benefits in Orchid are superb. I know that the disparity between the value of the health benefits and the lack of wages compared to San Bernita does not equal the same thing, but uh, it is a very fortunate health package that you all have. But I also think, as far as the budget goes, and this 84% that Eric talks about, there's the classified workers, too, that we need to take care of those folks. So within the budget, 
the negotiations happen kind of behind closed doors and we'll be a part of that and uh, I will make every effort to pay as much as we can but um, I don't know what more I can promise than that but uh, I sure do though appreciate the job that all the teachers are doing and the effect that you had on me and my kids. So in regards to the budget, we know that the existing board has set this new board up for success. They've gone through it with a fine tooth comb. Business services has all their I's dotted, their T's crossed. And so when we first get on the board, luckily things have been approved and are taken care of. Um, transparency of the process as we move on, I think is very important. I'm not so much sure about teacher salaries until the union gets involved, but I think we certainly might be able to look at teacher compensation and maybe help somehow that way. So I think that we also have to remember that the school district is made up of more than just teachers. They're made up of classified and certificated staff. So when I answer this comment, I'm gonna answer it for every school employee. Um, I think that we have to be able to retain good staff. And to do that, that usually means having competitive salaries. Um, I know in the past I've seen what happens when you don't have competitive salaries, teachers will go elsewhere. So there has to be a balance, and that's where it comes into looking at the whole budget and looking at the LCAP and looking what our priorities are and how we're going to spend our money. So I think that teacher compensation and all other school employees' compensation is very important. I think all districts are facing the same problems and concerns when it comes to budgets. Uh, I feel we need to look at how we can maximize the resources within our budget while maintaining the highest academic standards. Um, we always be looking for grants to help with funding as well while maintaining reserves for anything that may pop up within uh, the budget. I feel when you um, when you're looking at teachers, we always want to do what's right for our teachers for doing the great job that they do. Compensation definitely falls within that area, and we want to be able to pay our teachers the highest possible salaries that we can uh, within our budgets, because we do have the best teachers in the district, and they should be rewarded for the job that they do. Thank you. Um, starting now with... Um, Next, where is that? One, two, I have it. Other than safety, what would your priorities be for Measure G? Starting with Mr. Steller. So the newest school in the Orchid Union School District, there are two of them, Lakeview Junior High and Pine Grove, they were built in 1964. I was born in 1963 and I'm already feeling a lot of pains. These, these buildings are old. Um, we need to keep them safe. Um, I think, too, the weather patterns have changed in the last 30, 40 years. Some of these classrooms get to be 90, 100 degrees. Maybe we need to look into air conditioning. I think, too, looking uh, from a, cons a conservation standpoint, why aren't we using solar energy in the schools? I see it at Rigetti High School. So Measure G can encompass a great deal of things that I don't believe we've looked into yet. And as a board member, I'm going to have my eyes and ears open and, and I will look into every opportunity to spend that money wisely. Mark's right. Our schools, some of our schools are very, very old. They're very outdated. Uh, we're making classrooms work for other things. Maybe that was an art room and now it's a computer room. And it would be nice if we could make it look a little bit more fluid. Some of the cafeterias are very old. There's no covered areas. Um, the amount of students, for example, at Olga Reed and, and Oak 8, there's so many more students now. The cafeteria is very small. Examples like that of aged buildings. I also think looking at safety for pickups and drop-offs, that falls into the safety category, but it also falls into moving things along swiftly. If there's congestion at pickups and drop-offs, not only does that cause a safety issue, it backs everyone up. And I think that that is something to look at as well. 
Well, I think besides safety, there's a lot of things. Like right now, they're refurbishing some of the schools, and Los Alamos is one of those sites that's very old and was not refurbished when the other ones were a while ago. Um, buildings, I know that one of the plans is to update and build new science buildings at the high school. If your students have ever been in a lab classroom, um, we, they share it with the junior high right now for time, and that is very hard to teach an A through G course in a lab what you don't have access to all the time, so I know the district has made that a priority. Um, furniture is another priority, and making sure that all students have flexible furniture in the classrooms. So all of those things, I think, refurbishing and making sure that we are up to date. If you've ever been over to the high school and seen the bathrooms that were originally for elementary school students that high school students now use, that's another priority they've made, and I think that's important also. So school safety security is definitely an area that needs to be of high importance when we talk about uh, Measure G, but we need to look at other areas to help secure our schools, um, as well as uh, helping our, our teachers and students to be safe. Uh, we need to look at ways to increase innovation, the technology, so that we can get help in teaching our children uh, as technology increases throughout the way, all the way up into their careers. Uh, we need to be looking at the school grounds on how we can upgrade them, and we need to look at how we can properly house our teachers and students. Uh, we need to look at modernizing all the buildings, uh, putting on new roofs and different other aspects where needed. We also need to look at the portables to where maybe we can eliminate those and put in permanent uh, classrooms as well. But definitely the technology as well as modernizing schools. Now some of these things are going to affect as we speak, but we definitely, I know, we're probably not going to have enough money when it comes down to it, so we need to look at this as time goes on. So as uh, part of the Measure G Oversight Committee, I've gotten to learn quite a bit about what the district has looked at and, and the planning that's gone on uh, towards using those Measure G funds and the, the initial issues. I really think they've done a good job of prioritizing some of the, the most pressing needs, um, upgrading facilities, replacing portables. Um, as was mentioned, um, the, the restrooms at our high school are not for uh, big kids there. Uh, Los Alamos was not part of the Orchid District during the last bond issue and so missed out on a lot of the upgrades that happened at that time and so there's a plan to make sure that they're included. Uh, there's some things that really need some help out there. Um, beyond that as we get into the, the later stages of the bond there's some other you know it's a little less defined and there's some things that are um, kind of in the would like to do category. I think as we get to those, that's when we start looking for partnerships and ways we can work with other parties and kind of leverage things and maybe get a little bit more bang for our buck. Um, but one thing I think in all of what we do is make sure we're getting input from everybody involved, uh, get some buy-in into that and have everybody understanding where we're going to hear the voices of the people uh, that are gonna be in these facilities and using them. Thank you so much. Next question will begin with Ms. Waffle. Having student input into school procedures, such as dress code, should be integral at all levels of education. How would you connect with students? Thank you, Janet. I do agree that I think students should be involved in some of the decisions that are being made. Um, I myself have students, and I know that things are important to them as well. How to involve them is, I know, in regards to um, our local control, we had junior high groups participate in that. Dress code is an example, but we need to get input and what's working, what isn't working. I think it's very easy to communicate with students. They're very willing to talk. They just need someone to listen, and I think that I can do that pretty easily. Well, students are part of our stakeholders. They are the number one priority that we've all talked about tonight. I think we need to listen to them, and that is why 
we exist. Um, I, how would I do that? That's what I have been doing for the last 20 years, is taking time to listen to students. And then when you do listen to them, also following through and helping them figure out the process. So in, in my career, I have helped students become active um, participants in the community and go to the board and talk to them and address what issues that are important to them. So being willing to listen to all. So when my daughter found out I was running for school board, uh, she knew I was going to meet with Dr. Blow one day. And she said, Dad, I want you to talk about one thing, dress code. <laughs> and I actually forgot about that when I met with her. I don't know why. But <laughs> she was not too happy with me when I got home. But it's funny how kids have priorities um, a lot different than we do. When you look at their experience in school, what's important to them, socializing with kids, being able to wear what they like to in a given day. Um, all these things are different priorities in how we look at their experience. I think it's very important for us to be able to survey our kids and ask them on what they're looking for in a great experience at school. This can come with surveying families, uh, working with the schools uh, to be able to do this, to be able to find out what are they looking for in a positive experience, because it's all about the kids. So if we can go and interact with our, our schools individually and find out how we can go and get feedback from families, parents, and, and students, I think this would really help improve what they're looking for in their total education. Um, and, and it's something I look forward to doing. Because they are stakeholders, uh, just like teachers are, parents are, our students, our whole community. We need to involve everybody in the experience. Thank you. Um, last week, I got an email from a young woman who's a reporter at the high school for the Spartan Oracle with interview questions for all of the candidates. And one of the questions I referred to school safety. And so I spoke to my daughter, Isabella, who had graduated last year to try to get some of her feedback on that. And she suggested you should have a town hall meeting or an online town hall meeting with other students and, and learn what they think because this is something important to them. And it, and it was really something I hadn't considered reaching out directly to kids that way and, and learning what they think. Um, so I think making sure there's forums available for things that, that are on the, the minds of kids, as, as Laura, Laurel uh, mentioned about concerns about school violence. Um, I think an important part of community Communicating with kids is communicating with the parents, too. That a lot of times things won't happen if the parents are not aware of what's um, going on as well. And remember, this is primarily a K through 8 district. And so these are still forming uh, young people. And so they've got a perspective that should be heard, but the, the perspectives of their parents are also very important. Um, I think uh, we had our district or school board candidate orientation meeting um, recently, and one of the advice from the, uh, the current board members was visit campuses as a board member. And I think that's super important to get contact with the kids that way. So the best way to connect with the kids is to talk to them. Um, as I said before, in these eighth grade community interviews, they have some important and, and brilliant things to say. But secondly, when you have Wednesday and you have a late start and early out, I'll see 40, 50, 60 kids in a matter of about 20 minutes. Um, and um, they're full of energy, but, but they do have a lot to say. And uh, I do have kids in the market all the time, and, and uh, I have a story that I think kind of hits on communication and community involvement with the kids. I have a young man, I'll call him T, and uh, he comes in every day with his friends, and he never buys anything because he never has any money. And so he came in to buy something, and he was short, so the customer chipped in a quarter to help him out. And then when he left, he says, Mark, you know anything about this kid? And I says, yeah, he's a good kid. And he says, I want you to put five bucks aside, and next time he comes in, surprise him. And then he gave me another five, and sure enough, every time T comes in, I mean, this meant a whole lot to this kid. And I, I think those are the kinds of things where it, it's kind of a silent communication, but he got the point. But uh, I think, too, that, that kids do stand up for themselves now. Um, I have 
two kids with uh, disabilities. One of them, uh, James, is now 28 years old and, and he has a heart condition. And every single year at Rigetti High School, they'd say, you need to take PE. He can't take PE. And he'd have to fight with the PE teacher to say, hey, I, I can't have TV. And they say, no, you're just lazy. And I think eventually he took off his shirt and showed him, hey, take a look. So kids are advocating for themselves now. And I think that is a, a very good thing. Thank you very much. Next question will begin with Laurel. Um, the teaching profession is one of the hardest professions, I think people would probably agree. Um, more teachers leave the profession in the first five years than leave most other professions. So, and, and we have a terrible teacher shortage. It is a, it is a real thing. Maybe not in Orchid, but in the rest of California, we have a terrible teacher shortage. Um, what would you do to support ORCA teachers and make sure they feel valued and respected? So I'll start with a story. My very first year, I was a substitute teacher in Santa Maria Bonita, and I subbed in a kindergarten classroom for one week. That was the hardest week of my entire life. If you've never done that, it was crying and nose blowing and shoes needing to be tied and emotionally and physically exhausting. And I thought, wow, these women are heroes. And, and I, that's never left me, is how hard it is to be a teacher. And as a teacher, you are also a mother to, or a father to all of those children that you are working with. And I think that is the job of the district and the board ultimately to make sure they do feel supported. Um, and I think that you make them feel supported by making them feel part of the process and knowing that you care about them, but also by providing them with the resources they need and the professional development they need. I've heard teachers tell me many times, I just don't feel prepared for this. I don't feel well trained in this. And I think ORCID has done a really good job in providing PLC time and providing professional development for teachers. And I think continuing to do that and continuing to make teachers feel supported and part of the process is very important. You know, teachers are very important because they mold our children to who are today. Um, they, uh, they're very important part of the school district, and I've had great interaction with teachers for 19 years. We, we need to look at ways to improve communication uh, with all aspects of staff within the schools. Uh, we need to be visible at school functions. We need to find ways to communicate um, at these functions with all uh, teachers, uh, staff, students, parents, everyone that's involved with our schools. We need to find better ways to communicate and get feedback from our teachers, whether it's through surveys or, or how we can do this uh, technology-wise, be able to get it out there anonymously, be able to get feedback. I've worked for large corporations that constantly ask for feedback from their employees on what they think about where they work, what they like, what they don't like, how can we improve on things. There needs to be better ways to be able to communicate. Uh, I'm sure we can look at that to be able to make everybody feel um, they're working in the best environment possible. I've had people come up to me and talk about morale. Um, but we definitely need to find ways to communicate out there. And I think we can do that through technology, like I said, to make it anonymous and, and find out every aspect of working environments to find out what they're looking for, um, what they, like I said, what they think is positive and what they think is negative. Because it's very important to be able to do this through communication. I have tremendous respect for teachers. And it was really fun to 
go to a handguard football game and run across the student who says, hey, Mr. Melshammer, how are you doing? And, I, and I, I really got a lot out of that. Um, I think one of the things to best demonstrate the importance of teachers is listening and being transparent, um, hearing concerns, hearing challenges, um, being transparent about what resources available and what can be done, having a clear dialogue on that. I think uh, everybody 100% has the kids' best interests at heart, and by being transparent, listening, and given opportunities, I think we can really make some progress that way. Um, as was mentioned earlier, training professional learning communities, I think, are super important. Um, for some of the higher grade teachers, externships, getting opportunities to work out in industry during summers, I think is good. But really, listening and uh, being transparent, I think, are very important. Well, first off, I see a good number of teachers in the room. And to all of you, I really want to offer you a sincere, from the heart, thank you. Because you do have our kids' interests at heart. Um, as a school board member, I plan to be accessible. My eyes and ears will be wide open. And unfortunately, I can't hide from you, because you all know exactly where I'm going to be. But um, I have kind of the advantage of knowing so many of the district employees, teachers, administrators, classified parents and teachers, and I, and I talk to you every day. And now that there's a bigger stake in this for me, I'm sure I'll be talking a lot more. Um, on the beginning of the question, um, I think that it is very nice to know that uh, I believe there's about 530 positions in the Orca School District, and every single one of them are filled. So I, I commend the school district for that. But again, I just want to give my heartfelt thanks to everyone who serves our kids. So the question indicated teaching is one of the hardest professions, and I agree. I tried it. I tried doing my, my student teaching, and I don't know what it was. It just didn't work. So while it is the hardest, I imagine that it might be one of the most rewarding. Each teacher is somehow supposed to get to the heart of each student. I don't know how they do it, but they do. And it's also not just about a conversation and including teachers in a conversation. It's about inviting them in. We can have a conversation while we're standing here, but it's about listening and including them in the process. I'm also a big advocate for teamwork. Um, and so I believe that everyone is good at something, and if everyone does their job, this is actually what I tell my son, you either win or you learn. And if we're learning, then maybe at some point we'll get to that winning point, and maybe everyone will be happy in conversations that we can foster. Thank you very much. Next question. We'll begin with um, Mr. Henderson. How would you, as a board member, bring back parents to board meetings for input on school decisions? How would you get parents to the board meetings? So I think it comes back to communication. Um, and I was talking about this earlier. We need to find more ways to have better communication when we're talking about board meetings and when we're having board meetings. So being able to get that information out to them in, in as many ways as possible whether it's not only on our website, whether it's through emails, whether it's through flyers going home. Uh, how we communicate that to the parents is very important, as well as the whole community. Because the more people that we can get to attend our meetings, the more interaction we can get, the more feedback we can get. So the more ways that we can do that, uh, the better off we're going to be with getting, like I said, not only the parents, but all stakeholders throughout the whole community to take part and, and everything we're trying to do, uh, you know, which is, you know, making it all about the kids. The most effective thing I've seen for getting parents to board meetings is having their kids come perform something in front of the board. <laughs> but but um, having sat through a number of board meetings, there's an awful lot that's a little bit tedious and routine. Um, to follow up on what Sean says, 
communication obviously is important, but communicating when there's something significant going on that's going to have an impact to those parents, I think would be the key thing to getting that participation um, and knowing what time that's going to be happening so you don't have to sit through all of the, the other stuff there. Coming to the board meetings might be a great thing, but I would actually encourage parents to be more involved in their individual school. Um, make appointments to see your teacher or your principal if you have any kind of an issue. Um, the, the board is a governing body, but, but you're going to get a lot more out of your education with, with your teacher or your principal. And, uh, and if, if something should escalate beyond that, then certainly the, the board welcomes you. Um, or if you do have a cheerleader doing a routine at the board, then you better come watch. But um, I would just encourage all of you advocate for your kids. I have been going to board meetings for a year now, and there has been times where it's been jam-packed, like Eric says, when kids are performing and then everyone leaves. Or I've been one of two people sitting in there. They're not fun. They're tedious. I know a lot of parents feel intimidated by the process. I had a lady tell me that she was going to speak, but she was very intimidated. Everything moves very fast. And so I think maybe outside of board meetings is a good idea. When we're active in the community and we're going to fundraisers and we're visiting the schools and we're out there when parents are picking up their kids or you see them at 1030 at night grocery shopping, they feel comfortable talking to you. And if it can be done that way in an email that maybe is then presented to the board, then when they know that they have to come for a topic, then maybe they'll come. But it's intimidating. And I think that maybe that is where the issue lies with parents coming. I think everybody just gave such a good and unique answer to that. Um, I will add to it that um, I think that that is the board's role, is to really be the voice of the community. And what Mark said was great, that we need to get involved in our schools. We need to be as parents out there. I also know there's a lot of really tired parents out there that take their kids to a lot of events and are going, 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 and work. And so I think that making sure that the information is out there so that they know when the meetings are, making sure that when they come they feel respected, and making sure that they trust the people who are elected to be making good decisions for them. Thank you very much. We have one last question, and um, Mr. Melsheimer will get to answer this one first. Do you feel that you would have any conflicts, and I assume this means conflicts of interest as a board member, either real or perceived, would your professional life be compromised in terms of time off of your job? Thank you. Um, I do not see any conflicts of interest. Um, as far as the time requirements, I'm, I'm involved in quite a few things, and um, my work does require a lot of time. But I am my own boss, and so I can make the time available that's needed uh, for the roles as a, as a trustee. So it, you know, it's obviously a serious, important role, and I do not see any issues making that time available. No, I don't see any conflict of interest. Um, I know my boss real well, so I can kind of come and go as I please. Um, I, you will find me at the district office on many occasions. You'll see me at schools. Um, and uh, now that I don't have to get permission really to go to school, you'll probably see a lot more of me. But uh, no, um, I'm looking forward to um, meeting so many more of uh, the employees and staff and students and everybody. Time management is the story of a working mother. We have a job, we have a family, we have kids, we have sports, we have other things we volunteer for, but I have found the more involved you are, the more you work on your time management. So you have the confidence to be able to do what you can, you have a great family behind you, and you get it done. 
This question may or may not be for me, whoever wrote it. Um, my ex-husband is currently a teacher in at Orchid Academy, um, and I know how that could possibly be a conflict of interest. So in a situation where if it would affect me financially as a board member, I wouldn't be voting on that. Um, but I do think that that being said, as a past educator in this district and in the community, I think that I still really bring a lot to the table to have discussions with board members and collaboratively work together for everyone. So with my position with my company, we run everything through compliance uh, when we're looking to be in a position like this, which I've already done, and uh, that has been cleared. Um, the other part of my company is it's giving back to the community. They really uh, want us to get into the community, support the community, donate time with the community, which I've always tried to do. So getting involved in a position like this is something to the backbone of what my job really entails, and I look forward to doing it. Thank you. Thank you all very much. OK, final question for everybody. And we will start this one with Mr. Stella, right? Um, this is your opportunity to sort of give your final statement, wrap up what you would like to leave us with this evening address any unasked questions, um, final thoughts that you would like to leave. And I would just like to say before you begin, thank you so much. It's wonderful to have five very able and very qualified people running for only three seats. And thank you. So as a member of the Board of Trustees, um, I believe it's incredibly essential to be connected to your school and incredibly essential to be connected to your community. And uh, in my opening statement, I really did, didn't get time to go through this, so I'm gonna add to it a little bit now. Um, I'm constantly at these schools, and uh, Debbie can attest to that, and, and Bob, and so many other people's here. Um, Debbie asked me, and, and so does uh, Janet, to do the Emmy Award judging. I'm here every year, I love it. These kids are making movies that will make you cry and they'll make you scream. It's just incredible work. I went to an Elks function some years back in 2015 and surprisingly, Debbie named me the Business Associate of the Year for the Orchid School District. And I was touched by that because it wasn't like I was giving a whole lot of money, but she recognized me for my time. And I'm really appreciative of that. As far as the community goes, um, I'm Mr. Orchid. I'm Old Town Mark. I'm the president of UMA, which is the Merchants Association. I'm the vice president of SOAR, which sources funds for the academy. Uh, I'm on the Orchid Community Foundation, which nobody probably knows, but that's the Christmas parade. I was even a grand marshal a few years back, which, which was a kick. I'm also a charter member of Otora. And uh, once again, the connection to the community is just so important for the schools. You know, there's a lot of acronyms that have come up tonight. There's LCAP and all these other things, but I just want to leave an acronym from my business days. Is Ty still here? Maybe he'll remember that. It's, it's LIFO, which, which is kind of an accounting term. It's a last in, first out, but I want you to all remember last on the ballot first out to vote for, okay? <laughs> but um, once again, I just want all of you to know, 5,209 kids, and um, it, it's all the kids. It's the smart kids, it's, it's the handicapped kids, it's the lost kids. There's 5,209 of them, and they all have I, my heart. Janet, thank you for facilitating this and making it run so smoothly. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I know it's getting kind of late, and this might not. Football's on. So <laughs> um, in closing, I would like to say that this process has been very exciting for me. I'm ready for everything coming my way. I don't presume to know everything. I'm already learning a lot, not just about policies and procedures, but also about presenting yourself 
the existing board went over with that. You are always wearing your board member cap. You need to be a great representation of the district at all times. You can like me on Facebook. I'm at vote for waffle, the number four and waffle like the food. Uh, I will answer any questions the best that I can, and if I can't, I will find the answer for you. But overall, I'm very excited and very humbled at the chance to have an opportunity to serve. So the best part of this for me so far has been going out in the community and talking to my former students who are 18, 19, 20 years old now and saying, you know, talking to them about the school board and them saying to me, oh, where do I vote for you? Where do I go? <laughs> and, and them not understanding fully the process and educating them on, you know, when the election is, asking them if they are registered to vote and, you know, getting them in touch and then getting excited about the process also. For me personally, that has been great. Um, at our school board candidate orientation meeting that we had last week, the school board members who are leaving made an important point and they said, you know, your learning curve is going to be steep. You are losing us who have a great deal of knowledge. They did great things for the board while they were there. And I think it's important to have a board member that does know the acronyms, that has worked in the education field, and is able to come on board and right away know what's going on. And I think it's important to have a very well-rounded board, to have people who are in education, to people have people who are in business, to have lots of different parents and things like that. So. I, again, I have worked in um, schools with students from K through 12. I've worked in larger public schools and smaller charter schools. I've taught in the classroom, worked as a school counselor, as an administrator at the site and district level. I've sat on committees and boards in and out of the Orchid School District. And I just want to say in closing, thank you guys all for coming here tonight. The last time I spoke here was when I was giving out awards to some of your students. <laughs> um, and it's great that you all came out, and thank you. First off, I want to thank everybody for attending today. I really appreciate it. Uh, people ask me all the time one question. Uh, why do you want to be a board member? Um, they say it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of headaches. And I tell them one thing, I think of the days when all my kids started kindergarten. Uh, I watch them smile ear to ear with all the other kids. I think about my kids and all the other kids at honor roll events, jogathons, graduations with nonstop smiles. This is what makes me want to get involved. I care about this great school district where my children have gone here for over 19 years. We have great teachers who mold our children to be great students. These children attend California Distinguished and Naturally Recognized Schools that I believe can continue at those standards. We have three openings that are happening currently. I've always felt if you want to get something done a certain way, then you better volunteer to do it. I've done this when coaching sports in the community, and that time with coaching sports has ended, and now I'd like to turn my attention to a new venture. I will use my business background, school involvement, and nonprofit experience in doing so, because it's all about the kids. I have the following focus with taking this position. I will assure we have kids and teachers safe and secure while capping classroom size. I will assure the kids have a great curriculum with added enrichment, technology, and learning. I will assure we keep a focus on district budget and how we spend Measure G funds. I will continue to make sure we use dollars and modernize our schools and update them as well. I will do this by working with the district staff I have years of established relationships with. I will listen to teachers, parents, students by gathering their input as often as possible. I look forward to being visible, accessible, and a person that gathers all the facts to look at making the best decisions for the kids. I thank you for the chance to share my background and thoughts today and vision, and I really appreciate your support on November 6th. Again, thank you everybody for attending. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to all of you and hear your questions. Uh, thank you to Mrs. Dolan and the League for sponsoring this forum. Uh, it's been a great opportunity. Um, I think we're in an exciting time for education and for the Orchid District. There's a lot of great things going on. Um, quality public education is more important now than ever. It really ensures that all have an equal opportunities to really meet their potential not just those who are 
privileged. An educated society benefits all of us through better informed citizens, skilled workforce, and individuals that are ready to manage the complex challenges that we have today. During the past few weeks of um, campaigning, I've had a chance to speak about schools and education to a lot of people. Students, teachers, parents, administrators, past and current board members, neighbors. <clears throat> and as Sean mentioned, the one question that comes up the most is, why would you want to be on the school board? And for me, this was a decision I made very deliberately, and, and maybe it's sharing too much, but um, many of you knew my wife, Eileen, who um, passed away a little over a year and a half ago after a, a long battle with cancer. And she was a smart, funny, hardworking, beautiful, brave woman. In addition to raising our daughters, she was an RN, uh, a nursing instructor at Hancock, and she really impacted a lot of lives as a nurse, as a teacher, as a mom, as a really wonderful human being. And it was a big loss. And in the months after she passed away, I did a lot of thinking and reflecting. And I really thought about how can I make a difference and have a real impact. And I believe it's by supporting education that I can try to make a difference. I don't think anything impacts the opportunities for a young person more than having a good education and high expectations. And working on the school board of our amazing little Orca district is, is one way that I want to try to make a difference. Thank you. So thanks again to all of our candidates. We really appreciate it. And again, thank you to the district for allowing us to use this space. In fact, I really like the acoustics in here. We might be coming here again. <laughs> hint, hint. So um, thank you, and uh, obviously, whoever gets on the board, you guys are really lucky, and we are looking forward to November. Thanks again.